Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright out there. As you may know, I've made hundreds of videos to help people understand the basics of motorcycle mechanics and things like that. I'll put some links uh, in the comments. A little while ago, one of you asked me on one of those videos, could I do a basic explanation of the layout of a wiring loom on a motorcycle and what the parts do? And that was a really good idea, so let's do it. So a wiring loom is basically all the electrics of the motorcycle where it plugs into individual components. All that wiring is the loom. Now the way that it's laid out on most bikes, and I'm going to generalise for this video about locations of parts and how the cables will be laid, because it is in a general pattern, but obviously there will be differences. So, you have the main loom which normally starts up at the front, your headlight might be attached to the front of that loom or it might be a multi-connector, but we'll get to that in just a second. But the main trunk of it starts up around here, it comes down underneath the tank, along the bike, and somewhere back here you'll have a load more multi-connectors to get the stuff that's attached to the back. So let's start at the front and work our way back through all of the components. If you have ABS brakes, you'll have a pickup on the caliper with a wire going up to the front. And then it's the normal stuff at the front, as you'd imagine. Obviously, your headlight plugs into what could be the end of the loom, or it might be a multi-connector going onto the loom. The switch gear from both sides has got its own uh, little bundle of wires that comes down and plugs into a multi-connector. Indicators use two cables which plug into little bullet connectors, or clips if you've got something like a Suzuki which uses its own style of clips. And obviously you've also got your brake switch which turns on your brake light and you also have your clutch switch if you have one. They again go in and plug in in the front end. So basically everything on the front end tends to plug into a multi-connector onto the end of the main loom. Now coming off the main loom you're going to have a little branch and that's just going to go down to your horn. The horn tends to be around here in the front so it projects the sound forward. You normally can see it if you look at the front of the bike and look up you'll see it. If you have an O2 sensor on your exhaust, and the O2 sensor basically tests the combustion ratio of the engine and adjusts it as needed, so it tunes the fueling basically. It can be up right above the header, it can be further down the pipe, but it's normally somewhere around here, and again that plugs up into the main loom. If you have a fuel tank gauge, there is going to be a sender in the bottom of there, and also obviously the fuel pump, which is all going to be connected to cabling, which will connect to the loom there. If you have a bike like this that doesn't have one of those, you don't have anything like that. In this area, on the opposite side of the bike, you're going to have a magneto and a stator. That's how the bike creates electricity. You have a magneto, which is attached to your flywheel, which will spin around magnets around a copper, sort of like a star-shaped thing, that as it passes over it, it creates electricity, and that's what charges your bike, but not directly, and we'll get onto that in a moment. Now, all bikes have got coils and spark plugs, obviously, but they are in different places depending on what sort of an engine it is. This is a single cylinder, it's only got one spark plug. My XJ6 has got four cylinders, so it's gonna have four spark plugs. And then you have coil packs for those. A coil on a motorcycle is an inductor. It's like a reverse capacitor. It holds back power until it's disconnected. The coil is what fires electricity down the HT lead through the HT cap into the spark plug and into your engine. Again, that's normally plugged in up here. If your bike is push button start, as in it has a starter motor, you're gonna find the starter motor, well on this bike it's here in the middle. It can actually be in different ends of the engine depending on what type of engine it is, but that's just an electrical motor that when you power it, it shoves the central core out, which engages the teeth on your flywheel, and then it spins, which starts the engine. Then behind that, on this bike, I have a carburetor, so I have some carb sensors on there, which plug into the wiring loom up here again. If you have an EFI bike, obviously you're going to have injectors and all sorts of extra wiring in this sort of area, which will plug into connections as close as seems logical. They tend to make it easy to get to. The rear brake obviously has a switch on it, which has a cable coming off it, which again is just, it's a switch, so it's got two cables, and it plugs in again up here somewhere. And obviously on the opposite side, in the same location roughly, we have a side stand kill switch. Depending on what bike you've got, that means it may or may not start in neutral. Then coming back a little bit, and again this is different on different bikes, the battery is normally in around this area underneath the seat. On this bike it's totally not, it's in a little box on one side right at the back. But that's because this is a dirt bike and there's virtually nothing under here and we have such long travel suspension we don't have space for it under here. But on my XJ6, on lots and lots and lots of bikes, you'll find the battery underneath the seat. And that'll obviously be near where on the main wiring loom, the main connectors for your battery terminals come out. Those two connectors come off the main loom with some much heavier gauge cable and the earth will be nearby as well. The earth is basically just the earth lead which is screwed onto the frame to earth the whole frame. It's also why the starter motor only has one cable going into it because that's powering it and then the engine is earthed. So that's how it gets it to power back out. Again, not far from the battery, normally under the seat, somewhere around here, you're going to find your CDI or ECU. That's just basically the brain of the engine which controls it. 
Now the next thing we need to talk about is a regulator rectifier. This is a small device which kind of looks like a heat sink with cables coming out of it. It's normally visible outwardly because it needs airflow over it to cool it down. And it's normally around this area on one side of the bike. It's not normally hidden away. You can normally see it. What that does is it takes the AC from your stator and magneto creating electricity, converts it to DC, which can charge your battery and it runs the bike. If you have charging issues, it's not the battery. It's going to be a regulator, rectifier or something to do with your stator, generally. Then again, up in this sort of area, you'll have your starter solenoid relay. Now, what that is, is if you imagine a very low powered switch, and there's only a few volts, which is running a magnet and that pulls a metal pin through it. When the metal pin comes through, a lot more amperage can pass through a secondary circuit. So when you press the button to start, a few volts tells it to open, which turns the main switch on, which sends all the power from the battery to the starter motor to crank it over because it needs a ton of amps to do that. If your battery is going dead, when you try to start the bike, you'll hear that going nip, nip, like a vibrating sound or a clicking sound because it's just moving the metal pin backwards and forwards, but there isn't enough power there to actually start the bike. Or even then at one point when you get so little power, it can't even hold that solenoid open. So it ends up opening and closing. Again, somewhere in the back around here, normally under the seat, although in this bike it's actually up here in the front, is a thing called a flasher relay, which is what makes your indicators flash. If you have a flasher relay for a bike with tungsten bulbs, you know, standard bulbs, and you put LEDs on because they run at a much lower voltage, uh, it means they'll basically flash twice as fast. So what you have to do is put either resistors in line with your indicators, or you get a flasher relay, which is designed for LEDs. Again, that is generally around here. Also around here, because, you know, as I said, loads of stuff is under the seat. Fuse box. If you've got a fuse box on the bike, a fuse panel, it will be around here. If you have just a main fuse, that will also be very close to the battery under the seat. That brings us to the back of the bike, where, as I say, you're going to find multi-connectors, which connect to your rear light, brake light, tail light, uh, and the plate illumination light, and you also have your indicators which connect to it. On this bike, that's all bullet connectors going on to stuff that's all here. So I have loads of bullet connectors and hidden wiring going underneath his tail, which is neatly done. You can see me do that in my rebuild series of this bike. Now it is likely that I have missed something that may be on your bike because yours is different to mine, but this, as I say, is a general explanation of what parts you find on nearly all motorcycles and the general location where they tend to be. If someone said to me, where is the regulated rectifier on this bike? I wouldn't be looking up there and I wouldn't be looking down there. I would be looking in this sort of an area somewhere visible. It's those sorts of little rules that help you find things and know what you need to fix. If this video taught you something, please do hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new here. If you want to learn more, check out those playlists. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please consider doing that through Patreon for as little as about a pound a month. You get videos early, ad free, and you also get into my Discord. And I'm in there most of the most evenings so if you've got a problem with your bike and you want to come and check the hive mind and see if we can help you fix it come and join if you've got any ideas of videos you'd like me to do please ask if i've got one already i'll link you to it and if i haven't done it and it sounds good i'll do it bye bye